Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are doing a quick guide on how to play Survivor in the new game, Home Sweet Home Survive. So this game is still in early access. It released not too long ago, but it is a very fun game. And this is just a guide to help people who are new to the game because it is a bit of a learning curve. So I'm gonna go through as much as possible to help you guys out. But before we get into the video, if you're new to this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button down below so you can see more videos like this in the future. So without further ado, let's get into this guide. So the first thing we're going to go over is the basic controls for the game. There are very few, so it's not too much to learn, but let's go ahead and look at these. So you have a sprint and a crouch option. Um, these are binded to my mouse because I always keep on sprint and crouch to my mouse. But usually the sprint is just your normal, you know, left shift and the crouch is C. So pretty simple to remember. Then to use an item, you use your left mouse button. To interact with anything, you use E. To drop an item, you use G. And to aim when you have an item that's more long distance, you right click. And to use your stickers, you can use V. And that's everything that is here. You can even change your sprint and crouch to, I have it on hold because I mean, that's just what I'm used to, but you can also change it to toggle. So you can change your mouse sensitivity also, and you can change your skill checks. I keep it at Q and E just because it's around the WASD area. So it's a bit simple for me, but you can change it to other things. And like I just mentioned, my sprint and crouch are the only things that aren't the default keys. Usually with any game I play, I always use some kind of key binding because that's what I'm more comfortable with. And that's what I did with this game starting out, but it was a big mistake. And I did not learn that until way after I started playing the game, because as you can see, there's not that many controls here, right? There's actually a lot of controls and options that are hidden. Um, you can't actually change them. Like you can ping um, the killer and items and things like that. There's a lot of other key bindings that they don't have listed here. So when I put my key bindings in, it was actually attached to other keys and I was having some issues. So my advice is, I mean, you can change the sprint and crouch like I did, but I would suggest keeping everything else default because it does create some issues. One other thing that I recommend before you start your first game is to make sure you go to your settings, you go to system and you go to the region because for some reason they start you off in Asia. Um, the game is made in Thailand, so maybe that's why, but the default is Asia. So you do wanna change it to your region if it is not Asia because otherwise you will have some crazy ping. But once you have all those options sorted out, then you can finally get into the game. Okay, so now let's go over what the main concept of the game is, and then we'll go a little bit more into detail. So when you first load into a game, your main objective as a survivor is to do rituals. That's your main goal to escaping. So there are four ritual tables. You have to complete three in order for the exit hatches to start spawning. Once those exit hatches start spawning, you have one of two options. You can either one, wait for an ex exit hatch to spawn and then you can exit out of it. Or two, you actually can team up and kill the specter or exercise the specter. So either one is up to you, but I suggest trying to work it out with your team first. Don't do one or the other without letting the team know because that may lead to some conflict. But that is the basic idea of how to quote unquote win the game. So now let's get into chests. There are two different chests in this game. There are ritual chests and regular chests. So ritual chests always have this glow to them and they always have skill checks too. So make sure you keep that in mind because if you miss that skill check, the killer will know. But these ritual chests are very important because in order to complete even just one ritual table, there are three steps you have to take. The first step is you have to go into a ritual chest and find incense. Once you find incense, you go to a ritual table and you put it in there. Now my best advice on finding ritual tables, it kind of depends. It is a little bit of RNG, but if you know the map layout, then you'll pretty much already know where to find one. But as far as when you first start out, the best way to find rituals tables is as so. So there are currently only two maps in the game. So if you're on the swamp map, the best way to find ritual tables is as you can see in the ritual table, 
they have kind of these like lines and strings that you can see from afar and that can help you spot them. But if you're in a more indoor area, like the hospital, the best way to spot them would be to listen for them. They make a very particular sound. I'll try to play it for you guys and turn, turn up the volume so you can understand what the sound actually is. But if you follow that sound, then you'll find a ritual table. You can hear it through walls too. So just walk around, run around until you can find it. So once you have found the incense and you have put it into the ritual table, the second step would be to go back to a ritual chest and find a nail. You need this nail to complete the next step. It doesn't take as much time as incense to put in. It's pretty much automatic. So just make sure you put it in. Then you can start the third step of the ritual table, which is basically just praying. So certain characters can do this faster than others. Different survivors have different attributes. But for the most part, all you have to do is click E to start and then there'll be skill checks that will come up and you will have to hit those. Otherwise, it'll take your progress away if you miss it. Another helpful tip when it comes to doing rituals is to 99% any ritual that you do. And this is why you 99% it. There are four ritual tables and the specter has to go around all of them to, you know, stop you guys from escaping. So the second you do one ritual table, that automatically leaves less stress for the specter. So it does not decrease over time. You can leave it and it will be fine. So it is best to 99 the ritual tables. So then you can pop them all at once and the specter doesn't have any time to breathe. But that pretty much sums up rituals. Now let's go to the second chest, which is a regular chest. In this chest, it doesn't have any skill checks. This is basically just to get some type of item. Now I'll do a different video in the future about what the different items do, because that's a completely different topic. But in these chests, you can find different kinds of items to help you out throughout the match. Now, one big tip about these regular chests that I really advise you to listen to is that if you open a chest and say it's an item in there that maybe you're already holding or maybe you don't want, still pick it up and just drop it on the ground. Because if you don't pick up that item and you leave it in the chest, it will eventually disappear. So it's best to just throw it on the ground because when you put it on the ground, it, will, it won't disappear. I would even suggest dropping the item in particular areas that are close to you that seem like areas that another survivor may run towards if they're being chased by the specter. So another helpful thing in this game that you actually don't see in the control settings, like I was mentioning, there are some hidden controls. This is one of them. You can actually ping certain items and things like that to help your team know what's going on. So say you're walking around and you find a ritual table, but you don't have a ritual item yet. It is best to just go to that ritual table and ping. I think it's the middle mouse button. You can ping that ritual table and your other survivors, they will hear that ping and they'll know to go there. They'll know a ritual table is there. And if you ping it and say, oh, this ritual table needs a nail, then they might have a nail and they might bring it over and it makes things a little easier. It's also nice to ping certain items. Say you see one of your teammates is injured and you happen to find a syringe that heals you, then it is great to ping that item so that they can go to that item and they can be healed up. Another way that's good for communication is that you can actually chat to your teammates. If you click the enter key and type in some kind of text, you can tell your teammates certain things like, hey, the killer's on me or X, Y, Z. Now you can also do this by using your stickers, which is using your numbers like one, two, three, four. Um, and those are quick ways to do it, but you have to memorize which key is binded to which sticker. But if there's a particular thing that you want to type out, you can talk to your teammates. You can also talk to the killer, but I wouldn't recommend that. It seems like the only way you would do that is to taunt them. So I guess if that's what you want to do, go right ahead. But <laughs> you can change your chat to teammates only, or you could change it to all so that the killer can see that's really up to you. So now here comes a very important concept. We've already went over the objectives and doing rituals and getting items, things like that. So what happens if the specter finds you? 
Now again, I'll make a separate video on looping because that is a big bundle of information that's gonna be saved for another day. But let's go over the basis of looping. So the killer, they have different perks and different abilities to help stop you from surviving. But when they start chasing you, the biggest thing that you have to keep in mind is that you have a stamina bar. The second you start running, your stamina bar will go down. The second you stop running, your stamina bar will slowly go up. And obviously if your stamina bar is really low, it makes it extremely easy for the killer to get you. So you have to be very strategic about it. So you have to use your surroundings and your perks and items to help you out. So each survivor actually has their own built-in perk. I'll go over that in a different video, but those perks can help you during chases or out of chases. It just depends on which survivor you're playing. And as you level up, you can actually unlock and buy more perks with your currency. And also, as I mentioned earlier in the regular chests, you can grab out items. These different items can help you. They can stun the killer, they can stop the killer, they can damage the killer, or they can heal you if you're lucky enough to get away. But don't just focus on perks and items. You can actually use your environment a lot to help you out. So for example, there are a lot of doors within the maps, both maps. When you first start the match, the doors start off closed. It is very important that if you pass a door and you're not in a chase, just open it because the killer can break those doors. They can't go through those doors. That's why they have to break them. So if you're in a chase and a door is open, it is a good idea to close that door because they can't get in that room now unless they break it. But if you're starting a match and you're not in a chase and you go past a closed door, open it because since it is closed, the killer can just in their spare time, break them. It doesn't take a very long time for them to do so. There's very few doors on the map, they don't respond. Another thing you can use to your advantage are walls. There are certain walls that have holes in them and you can crouch in them. They work similar to doors. The killer cannot go in them, only the survivor can. If they want to go through that way to keep chasing you, they have to break that wall. But these are helpful for just stopping the killer for a certain amount of time. If you go through one of the walls, then just, you know, walk for a little second, get some of your stamina up and then plot your next move. So another environmental advantage are tunnels. So it's different in both maps, actually. In the hospital, they'll look like actual tunnels, they're vents. But in the swamp map, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you guys because they disabled that map because of bugs. But in that map, it's more like a big pot or something. I don't know how to explain it, but they do work the same way. And the way that they work is that if you click E to go through them, there's another pathway that you could come out of and that can stop the killer from getting you for a certain amount of time. However, you have to be very careful when you go through these tunnels. The first thing you have to pay attention to and to really remember is that you cannot go through these tunnels. You can't click E and go through them unless your camera is looking at the tunnel. So what that means is that you can't be turned around with your back towards the tunnel and clicking E and looking at the killer. It will not work. You have to look at the tunnel in order to go through it. Another piece of advice is don't just run to the tunnel and go through it. Be aware of your surroundings when you're in a chase. Look behind you and don't click E until the very last second. Because if you just run to that tunnel, then the killer will just go to the opposite side where that tunnel is. And they will just wait for you to come out and kill you. <laughs> so you have to be very careful with these tunnels. They can be very helpful, but since they put you in an animation, they can actually keep you still if the killer knows exactly where you're going. This game also has lockers, which are very helpful. You can go inside lockers to hide yourself from the specter, but you have to be careful though. You can't stay in that locker too long without getting a skill check. And if you miss that skill check, you will alert the killer and they will come for you. But you have to be aware because killers can break the locker. So you can't just jump inside of a locker in front of the killer with no plan and expect it to go well. They'll just break the locker and just go after you. So the last environmental advantage are these things. I'm actually not quite sure what it's called, but you'll see on the screen and you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's like this kind of spell, this hole in the ground that you can go through. In the hospital map, it just looks like a regular hole and you can go through that and the killer cannot go through it. They have to go all the way around to get to you. 
It's just another way you can try to escape the killer for a period of time. On a swamp map, it works in the same way, but instead of a hole in the ground, it's more of an edge as if you're like falling off or jumping off a cliff in a way. And like I mentioned, I'll make a separate video on looping, but the best advice I can give on looping is just make sure to keep track of your stamina, use your environment, your perks and your items to their best abilities. And also it's honestly very, very easy to 360 the killer. If you can predict when the killer is going to attack, you can actually stop sprinting. And then when you think they're going to attack, you're going to start sprinting and 360 at the same time. And then the second you stop 360 in and they miss their hit, you stop sprinting again. You just start walking. This is a great tactic to use if for one, the killer sneaks up on you and you don't have time to run before they hit you. Or two, if you're very low on stamina and resources, because at that point, there's not too much you can do, but stall time. So let's talk about what happens if you do not loop the killer properly. So if your health bar is extremely low and the killer hits you at that point, you will die. Now, don't worry, you can actually come back. You can be revived. Once you die, there's a timer on your icon. If that timer hits zero, you cannot be revived. However, your timer can be paused if another survivor is carrying your soul. When you die, you drop a soul and that is the way that a survivor can bring you back. So your fellow survivor will take you to a totem and revive you. It doesn't take very long, but obviously the killer can intercept that action. But if they bring you back, you only come back with about half health and you can go from there. But if you notice, if you come back after dying one time, you will have this kind of skull icon on your icon. This basically means that if you die for a second time, that is it. It is game over and you're out the game for good. So that is something to keep in mind. You can't keep getting revived over and over again. You only have two chances. Once that second chance comes, you're done. And when a teammate revives you, it's also important to note that there's no way to just individually heal yourself or others in this game. The only way you can get health back is if you go to a regular chest and you find a syringe and use it. That is the only way you can get your health back. Another thing to keep in mind is that say all of the rituals are done and the exit hatches are starting to spawn. If someone dies, you can actually pick up their soul and go through the exit gate and they will escape with you. So if someone dies at the end game, don't get too nervous. You guys can actually escape together. Also keep in mind that only one survivor can escape through one hatch. That's why there are five of them. There can't be two survivors going into one hatch. They have to go into their own. And on top of that, they don't all spawn at the same time. They spawn individually at different points in time. So you have to wait a little bit. So once the exit hatch has spawned and you find one, it does tell you where they are. So it's not like you have to go search for it. It's not a scavenger hunt. It will actually show you where it is. So once you find one, you can start clicking E and opening the hatch. It doesn't take too long, but it does take a second. So if the killer is right behind you, you probably can't open that <laughs> in time. I promise you. But once you open it, you can just click E and escape. But I will warn you, you cannot just click E and open it and expect it to stay open. It will close very soon after. So either you're leaving at that point or you're not. You can't just expect it to stay open because you will have to open it again if it closes. But those are all the general ideas, concepts, and instructions on how to start playing Survivor and Home Sweet Home Survive. All right, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe down below. Let me know if I missed anything. If you have any other tips that maybe I don't even know about, drop it down in the comment section below and let me know how helpful this guide is. I will make some more guides to help you guys out a little bit. I'm going to make a who to place um, kind of guide and a which items to use kind of guide. But this is just a basic guide to get you started with the game. But again, I suggest you go ahead and buy the game. It's very cheap right now. It's in early access. You might as well. And it's pretty fun to play. So now that we have gone over everything, thank you again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.